upside down, the rotation bags being right the space gray. for the flotation bags to write the spacecraft. Swim 1 is getting ready to deploy swimmers. The big swimmer is now spraying the hatch area and the top deck and around the hatch on the command module with a decontaminant. advises the crew they're Driver four Charlie miles away. Recovery uh, for your info now after we get these fellows picked up. Uh, we fly them straight back, of course, and uh, land, and I'll take the helicopter right down to the hangar deck and uh, move it over to the MQF and make the transfer. The recovery of the command module won't commence until after the president has talked to the astronauts and after he has deployed the aircraft. Back. going in now to pick up the first uh, astronaut. Uh, flight recovery, uh, Roger, your last uh, will be terminating the commentary and you can watch the board ship.
Okay, uh, on the flight control, let's come up on AFT conference, please. Everybody's going to talk to you. This is George H. talking. I'd like to make a couple of comments here. Uh, this is George H. here. I'm the loop fellas. And while the chopper is bringing the, the crew back to the carrier, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I think you all know that the events taking place here today uh, represent the culmination of the tremendous Apollo effort initiated by President Kennedy. I think you're personal uh, dedication and professionalism displayed here in Mission Control have contributed very substantially to the posture that this country enjoys today in space exploration. Uh, as a personal uh, expression of our gratitude for your help, your cooperation and tolerance over the years, General Phillips and Chet Lee and Tom McMullen and I uh, have left in custody with uh, Flight Director Gene Kranz, a small token of our esteem and thanks. Uh, lots of luck and don't choke on the bubbles. luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be President of the United States, but particularly because I have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. Uh, I can tell you about all the messages we've received in Washington. Over 100 foreign governments, emperors and presidents and prime ministers and kings have sent the most warm messages that we've ever received. They represent over two billion people on this earth, all of them who have had the opportunity through television to see what you have done. And then I also bring you messages from members of the cabinet and members of the Senate and members of the House and the Space Agency, from the streets of San Francisco where people stopped me a few days ago and you all love that city, I know as I do. But most important, I had a telephone call yesterday. The toll wasn't, incidentally, as great as the one I made to you fellows on the moon. <laughs> I made that collect, incidentally, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but I called uh, three, uh, in my view, three of the greatest ladies and most courageous ladies in the whole world today, your wives. And from Jan and Joan and Pat, I bring their love and their congratulations. We think it's just wonderful that they could have participated at least through television in this return. We're only sorry they couldn't be here. And also, I've got to let you in a little secret. I made a date with them. <laughs> uh, I invited them to dinner on, on the 13th of uh, August, right after you come out of quarantine. It will be a state dinner held in Los Angeles. The governors of all the 50 states will be there, the ambassadors, others from around the world and in America. And uh, they told me that you would come too. And all I want to know, will you come? We want to honor you then. <laughs> we'll do anything you say, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, one question I think that uh, all of us would like to ask, uh, uh, as we saw you bouncing around in that the boat out there, I wonder if that wasn't the hardest part of the journey. Was that the only, did any of you get seasick? 
No, we didn't, and it, it was uh, one of the harder parts, but it was one of the most pleasant, we can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just know that uh, uh, you can sense what we all sense. When you get back now, it's a, you've been able to follow some of the things that have happened when you've gone. Did you know about the All-Star game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, Capsule communicators have been giving us uh, they daily news reports. Yeah. Were you American League or National League? I'm a National League man. National You're not partisan, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's the politician in the group, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry you missed that game. Yes. Well, oh, you knew that too. You really yeah, we heard that. Uh, yeah, the rain. The rain. Right. Well, we haven't learned to control the weather yet, but that's something we can look forward to as tomorrow's challenge. Right. Right. Well, I can only summarize it because I don't want to hold you now. You have so much more to do. And gee, you look great. You feel as good as oh, you look. You great. feel just perfect, Mr. Yeah. President. Yeah. Are you? I understand your Frank Borman says you're a little younger by reason of having going into space. Is that right? Do you feel that way? A little younger? We're a lot younger than Frank Borman. <laughs> <laughs> there he is over there. <laughs> Come on over, Frank, so they can see you. And. Are you going to take that line down? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he has aged in the last yeah. couple of weeks. Come on, Frank. Mr. President, the one thing I want to, you know, we have a, a poet in Mike Collins, and he really gave me a hard time for describing the words of fantastic and beautiful. And you were, I counted them. In three minutes up there, you used four fantastics and two beautifuls. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let me close off with this one thing. I, I was thinking, as, as, as you know, as you came down, and we knew it was a success and it had only been eight days just just a week a long week that this is the greatest week in the history of the world since the creation because as a result of what happened in this week the world is bigger infinitely and also as i'm going to find on this trip around the world and the secretary rogers will find as he covers the other countries in asia as a result of what you've done, the world's never been closer together before. And we just thank you for that. And I only hope that all of us in government, all of us in America, uh, that as a result of what you've done, we can do our job a little better. We can reach for the stars just as you have reached so far from the stars. We don't want to hold you any longer. Anybody have a, a last word? How about promotions? Do you think we could arrange something? <laughs> Oh, we're just pleased to be back and very honored that you uh, were so kind as to come out here and uh, welcome us back. Uh, and uh, we look look forward to getting out of this quarantine and, and uh, great. talking without having glass great. between us. Uh, and uh, incidentally, the, the speeches that you have to make at this dinner can be very short. And if you want to say fantastic or beautiful, that's all right with us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to think of new, any new adjectives. They've all been said. And now I think, incidentally, that... Uh, all of us uh, who, the millions that are seeing us on television now, seeing you, uh, would feel as I do that, in a sense, our prayers have been answered. And I think it would be very appropriate if Chaplain Pirto, the chaplain of this ship, were to offer a prayer of thanksgiving. And if he would step up now, Chaplain, thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, our minds are staggered and our spirits exultant with the magnitude and precision of this entire Apollo 11 mission. We have spent the past week in communal anxiety and hope as our astronauts sped through the glories and dangers of the heavens. As we try to understand and analyze the scope of this achievement for human life, our reason is overwhelmed with abounding gratitude and joy, even as we realize the increasing challenges of the future. This magnificent event illustrates anew what man can accomplish when purpose is firm and intent corporate. A man on the moon was promised in this decade, and though some were unconvinced, the reality is with us this morning in the persons of astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. We applaud their splendid exploits and we pour out our thanksgiving for their safe return to us, to their families, to all mankind. Grant us peace beginning in our own hearts and a mind attuned with goodwill towards our neighbor. All this we pray as our thanksgiving rings out to thee in the name of our Lord. 
Amen. Amen.